Welcome back everyone and in this part of the plastering series we're going to go through the different types of casts in particular back slabs versus plasters or full casts. I'll talk you through the different ways that we describe these casts, when to use them and some links as well on to how to apply these casts. The biggest question people have is what is a back slab and what is a full cast? A back slab is an incomplete cast so it's not a complete cylinder around the limb that's being plastered. It's used predominantly to splint temporarily fractures that require further surgery or sometimes is used for undisplaced fractures that don't require manipulation and reduction and just are there for comfort. It also can be used when you have con significant concerns about swelling where you want some area of the limb to be non-completely plastered to allow for swelling. It also might be used in situations where you don't have the technical expertise or experience to feel comfortable doing a full cast as they're technically easier to do. The downsides of a back slab type cast is that it's less able to hold a reduction if you have to reduce a fracture, for example, as only part of the limb is going to be covered. You can increase the ability to hold reductions by increasing the percentage of the limb that is covered. So just instead of using one side, you can use a gutter or what we call a three quarter slab around a few of the sides of the limb. This here is an example of a back slab. It's an incomplete slab of plaster that we've drawn up in layers to make a rectangle of plaster. These can be cut into shapes to fit around metacarpals and thumbs, for example, if you're using it for a wrist. And there are videos in this uh, little series that can show you how to make specific slabs for the upper and lower limbs. The alternative is a full cast, which is a cylinder type cast, or is also known as a complete cast or total cast. These casts are wrapped around with the plaster sheet circumferentially in layers to create a tube, which is complete. The benefit is it supplies more rigid control of fracture mobility, especially important after you've done a reduction. One of the downsides is, however, if you get lots of swelling of the skin, for example, if you put your leg down when you get home after cast application, or the injury itself causes further swelling after it's applied, you can get effectively a tightness around the limb that can cause serious problems. It's really important after applying a full cast in particular that you are giving patients instructions about things to look out for, which are covered in one of the other videos. When to use either cast is really at your discretion. If you're able to do both, we recommend typically that back slabs are applied for simple injuries where lots of swelling is expected or the pending transfer to another area for further care. And a full cast if you think this might be the definitive treatment for a patient because it can then be kept on for the entirety of their care. This is particularly important if you've reduced a fracture because what we don't want to do is have a reduction performed in theatre or in the emergency department that then requires a change of that slab uh, to a full cast later on that requires the cast to come off. So if you're doing a reduction, it might be a good idea if you think it's not going to be too swollen. One of the other considerations is for people who are going to be traveling on an airplane. It might be important if you're doing a full cast to actually preemptively bivalve and cut the cast to allow for swelling that might be associated with long haul flights. Patients that are going to fly with a plaster are usually put in back slabs and often will require a letter of approval from the medical team that they need to take to the airline in order to get approval to fly. I hope that helps make it a bit clearer but when we talk about back slabs and full casts and please pop any questions you have down in the comments below. Mm -hmm.